Amen. Let us bow. Father God, thank you. Thank you that you have spared me one more day, God. You have called me to do your will, Father, and I'm grateful. God, I ask today that you just bless all of our ears. God, give us all understanding of your word, God. I'm grateful, God, and I'm thankful. I'm so blessed that Jesus died for me. And I'm glad that he rose for me. And God, I will do your will until he returned to get me. Let the church say amen. 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 God is good. God is just all right. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. You can be seated. Amen. Amen. First, I want to give honor to Jesus Christ. That is the head of my life. And I want to thank God for the shepherd of this church. Amen. My big brother. Amen. Amen. I truly love him. He has been a blessing in my life. Amen. It's amazing how God do things. Amen. And I thank God for him, and I thank God for his lovely wife, my sister. Amen. Amen. I am the only child, but I do have some brothers and sisters, and I have a big brother and sister. You know, when you come to do God's word, amen, I got to tell you, sometimes it, it's, it's tough. Amen. I, you know, to do this here is, 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 is it's mental. Amen. There's a lot of talking going on inside your head. And it doesn't matter how long you've been a preacher. It's the same old thing. Amen. Because you're now speaking to God's sheep. Amen. And, and you, you want to do the right thing. You want to say the right thing. But God say, do what I tell you. So because sometimes I may say some things you may not like. Them. But I don't want to be whole punished for not being obedient. So I have to do what God say. Jehovah is a relational God. And I have a relationship with God. So what I want to do today is share with you some questions. I, I won't be long. As you know, I have bladder problems. So, you know, when it get a little tight, I got to go. Okay, so it's not going to be long. So you don't have to worry about it. Amen. And I'm glad I can't really see far in the back no more. I need glasses. Mama always told me, just keep living. You will see. Now I need glasses. Amen. Do you know what amen mean? Amen mean you agree with whatever been saying. And many of us have been coming into church saying amen and don't even know what you're saying and you don't even agree, but you're saying it because everybody else saying it. But amen means you agree. So the first thing I want to do is I want to ask some questions just to get us a little, a little calm. And if you probably experienced it or you agree with it, just say amen. Or you could just wave your hand. Amen. Can you recall, parents, are uh, you driving and your little child in the back holler out, Mommy, Daddy, I got to use the bathroom. And you say, hold on, hold on, child, hold on, son, hold on, daughter. There's a store up the road. Can I get an amen with that? Yeah. So we all experienced that. How about this one? Is there anybody in here that has said, why is it that every time I speak, it's like I done said the wrong thing. I get shut down. Can I get an amen in here? Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, if this person say one more word, just one more word, I'm out of here. Can I get an amen? amen? Amen. We is in the house of the Lord. Amen. I can't take this man no more. I done had enough of him. All he want is this and that. I didn't sign up for this. Can I get an amen? amen? Okay, that one there was a little loud right there. Okay. Lord, this is too much. I can't, I can't bear this. I can't, I can't take this, Lord. It's, it's too much on me, Lord. I'm about to give up. I can't do it. Can I get an amen on that? Amen. amen. We are in the house of the Lord. Obviously, there's no uppity people in here. 
Amen. Because you got some people that ain't never experienced none of that. You got some marriages, they'll tell you I ain't never had a problem with my wife or husband. Amen. My wife and me been together a long time. It's been beautiful. She's in the church today. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I want you to take your marker, and I want you to just put them in chapter 7 and 8 of the book of Luke. Chapter 7 and 8 of the book, and just put a marker there, okay? And our topic today is just hold on, just hold on. I want you to know he's coming, church. I want you to know Jesus is, is coming back one day for us, but I need you to, to hold on because sometimes life can get, can get a little hard. You know, pressure, pressure busts pipes, and a lot of water will come out. But the Bible says that we're going to go through some struggles. But, you know, when we're going through we can't remember nothing what thus said the Lord. It, it gets, you just can't. I remember hearing a deacon the other day, he was saying he was in the hospital, and he was dying. He was dying. And he said when he was sitting there, he was honest, and he said that he did not call on the name of the Lord. All he wanted to do was see if the doctor can find a cure for his ailments. It wasn't about that. Maybe it was his time to leave. You do know a lot of us, you know, we, you know, we don't really like to say we're we going to die. But you do know you living to be with the Father, which means you're going to have to die. That's why we, that's why we come to church. Is it, is it any other reason why we come to church? Maybe you want to just let somebody see you in your beautiful clothes. But you're coming here because... You're, you're, you're going through. This world is, 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 is tough. And you know, and, 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 and you'll be like, I got to hold on to the Lord. I can't, I can't, I can't let him go. I can't let him go. You can't agree with me that it is, it's rough out there. Uh, it's, it's really rough. Out. It's, it's hard to be a Christian. But Jesus explained to us in the book of Luke that if you're going to be a disciple or a servant, you're going to have to surrender. Even at the lowest, downright getting some fights. That's spiritual fighting. Guess who you will be fighting? You. Your battle is against you. Your enemy is you. You know, a couple of weeks ago, my son... Uh, received his bachelor's degree. He graduated summa cum laude. But I can, I can tell you this, it's something about a good mother. A good mother will get downright nasty, ugly. Some of them will get in some fights. Not curse you, but cuss you out when it comes to your child, to their child. That's, that's, that's a good mother that's willing to, to, to fight a, a battle for you, a, a fight you don't have to fight. Kind of sound like Jesus, huh? Jesus said, I'll fight the battle for you. Can I tell you that that day at the graduation, it was, it was a beautiful day. It was a beautiful day for a graduation. And it was about maybe 2,000 people Mostly women's, just like it is in the sanctuary today. Just hold on. He's coming. Now it's time for the best part of the commencement, the name calling. Three to five years of hard work has paid off. The long hours at the, at the work study table has paid off. Saying no to parties will some of the parties, has paid off. Finishing up that report that was more important has paid off. Doing whatever it takes for that day to hear your name. Kind of sound like, well done, 
good and faithful servant. Mm. But hold on. There was this little section where they, they take pictures. And it's like thousands of people over here to take this picture for the ceremony. And I can see my wife. She's heading over there. And I'm like, why don't she just wait to the end when it's available and take the pictures? You know, I'm the one in the family that got the brains. You know, I, I think things over before I do it. You know, why try to take the picture with all these people and everybody trying to take a picture of their child? So my mom is there. And I'm saying, I don't know why she's going over. My mom's like, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, son. She's going to do what she's going to do. She's going to get that picture. See, it's kind of like Jesus. Whatever I'm going through, Jesus got it. Jesus is going to make it happen. So in other words, you don't really have to do anything because Jesus got it for you. And by the way, she took that picture. All those people over there, I don't know what she said. I don't know who she pushed. Up, but mom did say, don't worry about it. She's going to get that picture. She's been well trained. Well, she got that picture, and like it was nobody around. But I got to tell you, God is good. He allowed his son to, to get on the cross for you and me. And we can't take the advantage of what Jesus did for us. Now, I notice when it come down to a, a Christian that that gave their life to Christ. Let's be honest. Do we act like we really appreciate what Jesus did for us? A lot of us, you know, we, we come to church just on Sunday. Just on Sunday. And we just sit back and enjoy the service. Was there anybody today that had church before they came to church. Amen. See, when something or somebody is good to you, you know, you don't, you don't have to be pumped and prepped. See, in order for my son to get that summa cum laude, he knew that he was going to have to buckle down and study and study. Turn a lot of things down. When you gave your life to Christ, you is a new person. Your old thinking is gone. You done grabbed the whole of Jesus Christ. And you know how hard it is if you let him go. What it's like to get him back. So when we come to church. And we already had church. It's a hallelujah moment when we come together. Nobody should have to tell you. Can you please stand? When the praise and worship come, if you already had church, you already on a high. See, nobody had to tell my son, the day is your day. See, he knew that day was his day. And he was excited. His jitters and his nerves probably was jumping. But he knew that he had accomplished something. You know that Jesus died for you. You already know that. You know Jesus died. You know Jesus died. Brought you from the grave. Some of us were some crazy people. Some of us were some wild people. Some of us was living on the edge. Most of us in here probably could say, I don't even know why I am here today. If it wasn't for Christ. But we're going to come to church and we all concerned about the choir. The only time many of us going to do a hallelujah moment if the pastor do the hallelujah moment. Like he the only one blessed in him. Now I know I don't seen y'all because I done been with it too. When, it, when Rev do one of these numbers, hey! Did the whole church go, hey! What y'all need, a pep team or something? God been good to you. Let the music stop. Everybody stop. What you doing? Singing because of the music or singing because of Jesus? You know the day you could have woke up dead? Let that marinate. You do know that, right? You could have woke up dead. Some of y'all come in here 
like you the only one got problems. Some of y'all come in here like you the only one been sick. Some of y'all come in here like you the only one know the word of God. And some of y'all come in here like you're special. This is my seat. You can't sit here. Can I get an amen? You do know God like boldness, right? Maybe y'all don't, y'all don't know that. Luke 10. If you could turn it real quick. Luke 10, Luke 10, Luke 10. Luke 10 talking about what Jesus was telling a story about two friends. One friend was asleep. One friend had a visitor to come over, but he didn't have no food. So what he did, he went to the friend house and knocked on the door at midnight talking about, can you give me some bread? The friend said, look here, man, it's late. Come in the morning. The Bible says that this friend was boldly. He kept knocking. He kept knocking. He kept knocking. Till the man said, man, take this bread. God called us to be bold people. Not laid back people. Not sedity people. God called us to be bold people. People ought to know that you are a child of God. They can see it in your walk. They can see it in your talk. Not just in church. Because some of y'all, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, walk out to church. Man, I'm sick of him. I don't know. But that's the truth. If you're going to be a Christian and you're holding on to the Lord, hold on and act like a Christian. Act like a child of God. Now, I'm not going to hurt nobody's feelings. I already got prayed up. The pastor had me in the back and he told me, look, boy, speak. I say, Pastor, I'm thinking, you know, sometimes you be feeling you can't say some stuff, see? If God told you to say it, it'd be best you say it. And by the way, when, when you hear the man of God giving word, the word for him too. Matter of fact, he's just sharing it with you. Because when God corrects, he's correcting everybody, even the one that's speaking. So don't go around thinking who he think he is, be telling me I'm in the same boat with you. Listen, if you holding on to the Lord, it got to be a reason why you're holding on to him. See, I'm, I'm holding on to the Lord. I'm, I'm going to speak a little bit about it. I'm holding on to the Lord for, because I need him. Because I know if I let the Lord go, I'm going to mess up big time. Sometimes I'm holding on to the Lord and I still mess up. But by me holding on to the Lord, the Lord said, get your tail up. Get up. See, some of us, when we let go of the Lord, we don't act right. We don't come back. You ever listen? Let's be honest. If you miss two weeks in church, it's bound you're going to miss at least Two more months. It's true. So I decided I'm going to hold on to the Lord. I'm going to hold on to the Lord. I'm going to hold on to the Lord. Now, how do I hold on to the Lord? See, there's, there's something we got to do as Christians. We got to get in our word. See, don't get in the word for somebody else. See, a lot of us like to go to the Word and say, they go in the Word because they want to tell their husband what does said the Lord. Husband want to tell the wife what does said the Lord. When I want to have a conversation with you, I want to tell you what does said the Lord. See, when you get into the Word, it's personal. See, the Word say, I will correct you. See, if I want a good marriage, I, I don't need to say, well, I want my wife to do this. She need to do that. No. What you need to do. And when she looking at me, it's what she need to do. See, a good marriage is like, I'm trying to give her all my love, and she's trying to give me all her love. See, we fighting to try to give one another love. A lot of us get married, you be like, okay, he need to give me all the love. And that's the only way I'm going to give him love. See, the Bible says it's, it's unconditional love, which means even if the woman or the man not treating you right, still love her. The pastor's in 1 Peter. He say, even though the, the boss man treats you good, you treat him good. But it also say, even if he treats you bad, you still treat him good. That's the part we look over. That's why you should never just read one scripture. 
Read a couple of more. The one before, the one after, you'll get all the understanding. Luke 7 and 36. I like to do just illustration. Like I told you, I'm not going to be here long. Trust me. But I, I want to make sure we get it today. We're, we're in Luke 7, but I want to just make sure we get good understanding because anytime you get connected with Jesus and you begin to react to Jesus, you don't just act right then and there. It's a process. A lot of us have given our life to Christ and we have yet to do the work of Christ. But we say we come to church, but we're not doing what the father has told us to do. We haven't begun the plan that he have given. to us. You do know you have a plan. God has given all of us a plan. But we're too busy trying to do our plan. Like right now, somebody said before they came to church, they said, listen, we got to about 1105 and I'm done, Lord. So whatever he say after 1105, I don't hear. Now, if Jesus came by at 1105, was a blessing everybody here, you didn't get yours. It was this lady. She was a immoral woman. And what she did was please men. And she heard about Jesus, just like you and me. But she kept on doing what she, she do. And every now and then she would hear somebody talk about how good God is and Jesus will save you and, and Jesus brought me from here and Jesus brought me from there. But she kept on doing what she doing. But then something happened. She heard. She heard, she heard about Jesus and that he can forgive you of your sins. And a ringer came in her ear. You know, I'm, I'm tired of what I'm doing. I, I don't want to be like this no more. Have any of us ever said that before you were saved and you, you, you heard about Jesus, but you kept on doing what you do? But you heard about Jesus, and then one time you heard about Jesus, and all of a sudden, I need to change. Just like this woman, I need to change. And it's amazing when God gets our attention and we come to God. It's always in a, in a time that's abnormal. This woman could have been in the act of an adultery. And the Holy Spirit said, Jesus loves you. You ever been in the wrong spot or doing the wrong thing? And the spirit just come out and say, Jesus loves you. You need to stop doing this. Or you need to stop doing that. Give your life to Christ today. I can see that woman say, you better go ahead and do what you need to do. Because today is the last day you ever going to get this. I'm going to follow Jesus Christ today. I'm going to change my life today. Luke 7, 36 says, Jesus had been invited to a dinner party. As the guests among high-class people and well-do people, however, an unexpected guest showed up. A woman who was labeled immoral. Understand me, all of us are sinners. But to call a particular woman immoral was to say something about her lifestyle. She probably was a prostitute that had experience in satisfying men's need. Uninvited guests, she showed up to this party. She came in with a big box of expensive perfume. The Bible says that when she came in, a sinner, a sinner woman, a woman that probably had done slept with some of the men that was at the party. But this time she came in crying. And she went up to Jesus. 
See, it's something about being bold for Jesus Christ. You know what it's like to tell somebody I was wrong? We don't like to do that. It's called pride. We don't want nobody in our business. But the Bible says this woman, the prostitute, and everybody knew her. She came in, cried, took her hair, and cleaned Jesus' feet with her hair. Now, hold up. What woman you know that's going to take her tracks and clean a man's feet? She bent down and cleaned Jesus' feet, which means she had no more pride. She didn't care what no body think about her. That's, that's, that's what I can say about a woman. When a woman done made her mind up, she don't care what you think or say about her. If you are a Christian, you should not care or think what nobody say about you. Nobody don't know what the Lord have done for you. Nobody. Many of us sit in the house of worship and we want to do this, but we won't. Because we're too concerned about what this person going to think. Many of us want to join the choir, but you won't. Because you're too concerned about how people think you sound. Many of us want to be a deacon. Many of us think that we're not qualified to do it. This woman walked in, a prostitute, boldly, crying to Jesus for the forgiveness of her sins. And what Jesus said, and your sins are forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. It went a little further. There was this man, they called him Jarius. Chapter 8. He was a pastor. But he was a pastor that did not believe in Jesus Christ. But like I tell you, everybody done heard about this man named Jesus. Everybody. Everybody has heard about this man named Jesus. Jairus was a preacher, a leader in the synagogue, which means he was preaching. He was preaching that you cannot believe this Jesus. He is not the Messiah. But here's the thing. When he went out the doors, he heard. That's what we got to remember. Everybody in here done heard about Jesus. Everybody, he said two by two. Matter of fact, is it anybody out of here, out here in this crowd, that's saying, I've been witnessing to people about Jesus Christ. Everybody has been called the witness. He heard. So matter of fact, he had to be hearing about this man named Jesus, how good he is and what he can do. And he done this and he done that. But it's something when we get caught up in the pressure. The Bible tells us that Jarius heard that Jesus was down by the seashore. Jarius, hurry up. Why was he rushing to get to Jesus? Because now his daughter is sick. She's dying. It's amazing how we'll come in the church because we need Jesus. And when we get what we want, we leave. But like I said, it's a process. Why would I say it's a process? Because I can use me. When I came in the church, I was on fire. But then I left. But here's the blessing. Jesus uses people. To bring you back. Now my thing for that right there. Jesus need to be able to use you. To help the laws. And bring back our brothers and sisters. See we all have an important thing in this house today. And that's to spread the gospel. To tell people about Jesus. Not to preach their head off. But tell them how good Jesus is. Let them know Jesus is coming back. And if you want to make it in this world, you're going to need to hold on to them and don't let go. That's our job. That's our message to people. But Jesus needs you 
Jesus didn't call you just to sit back. Because when you don't, when you get to Jesus, he's going to look at you and say, well, you know, I died on it. You're going to say, yes, I thank you, Lord, for what you've done. And then he's going to say, well, what did you do? We all still got time. Because we could have woke up dead today. We got time to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Jerry is at the seashore. He gets there. He found out Jesus is gone. There's a whole lot of people waiting for Jesus. Jesus was spreading the word all over the place. Now, here's the thing. Now, Jesus couldn't pop from Georgia to South Carolina like that. What did Jesus do? I'm going to say it again. Jesus used people to spread the message. So when he got there, the head already knew about him. See, that's just like us. When we come to Christ, we know him, but really we don't know him. The only way you get to know Christ, you got to get into God's word. You got to assemble yourself around other believers that's holding on. You need them. I need you. You, you, listen, you got to know how to hold on. Why do I need to hold on? Because he said he's coming back. I got to be ready. You don't want to, you don't want to be not ready when he comes. It's going to be too late to try to fix it. You got to fix it now. He's not going to come back and preach the gospel. He coming back for a pickup. And you got to be ready to get on the bus when it come. You can run behind it all day. You're not going to stop. You got to do it now. No Christian. Listen, if you're a child of God, I understand it. It could be a little nerve wracking if the, the pastor say, would you like to come up and pray? I know it, 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 could, it could be nervous. You know, the fear, but it's about Jesus. It's always about Jesus. If you come to church, what you coming for? You coming to hear about Jesus. You coming to hear some word that's going to feed you and make you stronger because it's rough out there in the world. And Jesus wants you to be in the world and so people can look at you and say, oh my God, that must be a child of God. Even if you fall, Jesus wants to see you get up. People see us. People are watching us. We got to learn how to hold on, church. You got to hold. Listen, I don't just come to Bible study just to be coming. I come to Bible study because I need to come. I don't even come because I want to come. No, I need to come. I need to come. I work like everybody else. I go through the same, but me. I need to. I, I need it. I need more than that, too. I ask Jesus all the time, is there any, anything else you can lay at me? Because I need it. I need it. I know what it's like to be doing this, and a woman walk by, and my neck go, I need Jesus. I, I, I know somebody here know when you, you sit at a table and somebody come up there with a sheriff's regal and you done gave your life to Christ and you no longer drink. You can't tell me when that bottle hit that table. You're going to look at, ooh, Lord, that look good and tasty. Some of us be lying on our taxes and lying on everything. And come into church, everything is good. No, be honest. Be honest with yourself. He said he got you. The reason why you don't believe it, because you never tried him. Listen, the Bible tells us what's not going to make it into heaven. Lying and stealing and fornication, men with men, women with women. He said you will not even see it. But we want to go to heaven, right? We want to see Jesus. In the beginning, it says, you're going to work. You say, yes, you say. You are saved. But you do know. You got to be transformed. You have to surrender from, from everything. 
Jerry stood there. He waited. How many of y'all waiting on Jesus to return? Does it say to go to return? How many of us are waiting for it? I'm waiting on Jesus to return. Jerry was standing by the seashore. He didn't leave. He stood there. The man that didn't believe, but now he believed. See, he, got, he was in the synagogue, but obviously he decided to say, no, it's all about Jesus, which means he had to go stand in front of the synagogue and tell the same people about the man he didn't believe. Now he believed. Do you do that? Do you tell people about Jesus Christ? There's a man on a job at the airport. I'm coming through security. Now, this guy's supposed to be doing security work. This guy got all his Bibles out. You can't even walk through the door because he got the Bibles out. To me, that's both. Because I was ashamed to walk down the street with the word of God in my hand. I was ashamed to put the Jesus Christ stuff. My daddy was a pastor. And my daddy used to buy me every year, every time he come from his Georgia trip, he comes back with a big bag of peanuts and a hat that say Jesus. And he would give me one every year. I was so ashamed to wear that. I was like, man, what's, I keep coming back. Can't he bring me a New York Nick hat or something? A Georgia Bulldog? What's up with the Jesus? The reason, I was just terrified. I was scared. I was scared to pray. I was literally scared to pray. I knew the Lord, but I was terrified. We all done done it. You at the dinner the table, somebody busts out and say, let us pray. And they say, John, you going to pray? Boy, I'd be like, why are they calling me all the time? You ever been there before? Scared to pray, but you love the Lord. Jerry is no longer is denying the Lord. He's telling everybody about the Lord. Jesus come back, guess what he do? He run to Jesus and fell down on his knees and said, Jesus, I need you. No longer scared. He's bold for Jesus. I'm speaking today because I need you. We need to be bold for Jesus Christ. The world need to see us. The world need to hear us. Jehovah Witness seem not to be scared of what they're doing, and they're wrong. We're right. But we can't get none of us go knocking on no door telling somebody, how you doing? My name is John. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm just in your neighborhood to tell you that Jesus loves you. And if you don't mind, you can, you know, we're going to be doing this at the church. Yes, terrified. You ever notice that? You know, you'll never see out of all the religions, all, all the religions, all the religions are in one accord except Christianity. Obviously, we're not holding on to Jesus. We're not holding on to his words. There's a lady, she's bleeding for 12 years, but she heard about a man named Jesus. She probably had the big ear listening. She heard somebody say he fed 5,000 with one little piece of bread. She probably heard about that he took spit and put it on a blind, blind man's eye, and now he see. The man couldn't walk. He touched his legs, and now he walked. Then they said that he is the son of God, and he forgive you of your sins. I can hear that lady that had been suffering for 12 years. Where he at? Where he at? They said he's down there by the seashore. And as he coming, she's, she's looking, where he at? Where he at? She don't care. So she, when they, and the Bible says when you was like that, a, a woman that was bleeding, she was considered to be unclean. She don't supposed to come out. She can't come out. But she, she didn't care. She needed to know Jesus. She needed to see Jesus. She believed because she heard. She heard. She heard someone talking about Jesus. That's what happened. She heard. Have anybody heard you talk about Jesus? The world is waiting on us to tell them about Jesus. They waiting. They waiting on somebody to say, no, 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 it's not like that. No, Jesus loves you. It's a big crowd. Jairus is with Jesus. Jesus said, I'm going to go to your house. Jairus is happy now because he know, he already knows Jesus is going to heal his daughter.
How many of y'all believe that Jesus got you? How many believe it? How many of you believe that Jesus is going to make a way? How many of you believe that Jesus got you? You don't have to worry about nothing. Jesus got your child. I don't care if your daughter gay. I don't care if your son gay. Jesus got him because you, you put him in Jesus' hands. You in that marriage and it ain't all that good. You still standing on Jesus. You letting your husband or your wife see that you are a child of God. And even though they, they want you to do this and that, but because of Jesus, you're going to do it anyway. Now with a marriage, let's go to that marriage. We all know how a marriage is. If you want a good marriage, you need Jesus. You really need Jesus if you want a good marriage. Because the day you say I do, maybe a week or two or a month, you're going to say, who did I marry? You're going to need Jesus. See, married couples, I'm sorry, married couples should be in Bible study all the time. I don't care. I'm just going to say it. Married couples should be in Bible study all the time. Men should be in the house of worship all the time. It's a lot on us. It's a lot. And the only way you can do it, you need Jesus. I've been married over 20-some years. Jesus has been good to me. But I, I, I believe my wife will say the same thing because she had to take up, take my crap just like I had to take her crap. But we made it in our mind. When we got a problem, we're going to see what thus said the Lord. And that's how we go. The lady see Jesus, big old crowd. Jerry has got a smile on his finger because they're on his way to his house. And this lady is unclean and she's bleeding, probably just leaving drips all over the place. And then she sees Jesus. The Bible now just says that this woman, let's just think about it. How did she touch him? She had to be laying on the ground, Sister Baker. She had to be. They probably just walking all over and everything. And, and, she just, and Jesus walked by. The Bible says that. She touched a fringe. You don't know what a fringe is? That's like a piece of thread. Now, hold up. Let's take it good. The Bible says she got up. The Bible said immediately she knew she was healed. That's her faith. Remember, read it. She was healed immediately. Then, then Jesus said, hold up. Who touched me? Somebody touched me with faith, which means when you holding on to Jesus, number one, you ain't got to go to nobody's house. All you got to do is call. When you got faith and you holding on to Jesus and you living and abiding in Jesus, you listen, you start speaking and stuff just happened. Say immediately she was healed. And Jesus said, who touched me? Which means, what did he say? Someone touched me with what? Faith. Which means when she touched him, he didn't have to command heal. She was already healed. What does that mean, church? If you holding on to Jesus Christ, you ain't got to worry about nothing. You don't have to worry about a thing when you're holding on to Jesus Christ. I done got up in age now. And may the Lord bless me to see more. But I had a chance to see some women's in my life and some men's that when they got up in age, they hold on to Jesus. They didn't let them go. They got to the point where they couldn't drive no more. They made their children take them to church. I done seen sick people. Tell the pastor, make sure you send a minister by my house every Sunday and have church with me since I can't come to church. I've seen a lot. I've seen a man dying right before my eyes, calling on the name of the Lord. But when he was calling on the name of the Lord, it was almost like, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm going to be with you today. That amazed me. I done seen marriage couples 
that was going this way. But when they was obedient to the man of God, when he said, put Jesus, put his word in your marriage, a lot of us go to counsel and we never take the advice of what the messenger is telling us. Just try Jesus. He'll bring everything together. He'll make you smile. He'll make you come in this house of worship and give him praise. And when you leave, you'll still be praising. I'm just telling you, church, just hold on. Because I want you to know something. He's coming back. He's coming back. And guess what? We need to be ready. Amen. Amen.